Every year we get the Christmas story and we know it pretty much by heart. But here are the top six Christmas myths that we get wrong every year that we think are true. Number one, Jesus was born on December the 25th. There has been a long-standing tradition with celebrating Christmas on the 25th of December as this is Jesus' birthday. Is this the date of his birth? The Bible doesn't really give us a date. However, with the shepherds looking after their flock in the fields at the same time, most likely would not have been in the middle of winter as is in the Northern Hemisphere. Unlike here in Australia in the Southern Hemisphere where we stuff ourselves into a small room on the hottest day of the year with the aircon blowing full and trying to eat the hottest roast meal we can ever get. <sighs> we just want to be like you guys. But for the shepherds in winter, it would be too cold outside and would most likely mean that Jesus was not born at this time. The other reason is at the same time there was a census and these only happen in warmer times of the year. We don't really know when Jesus' birth would most likely be. However, most historians believe it is to be near the end of September. Probably. Most likely. Number two. There were three wise men. We all know the story, the plays and the songs with regards to the three wise men. In the book of Matthew, it just states that the wise men came from the east. They may have been wise, but how many of them is not specified. It is definitely not one, as the words wise men is plural, but how many more is not specified. Some traditions even have 12 of them. We only say that there are three due to the gifts, gold, frankincense and myrrh. That's it. Yep, yeah, that's all the evidence we have. The prezies. That brings us to number three. Did the Magi greet Jesus along with the shepherds at his birth? Again, we see all the pictures and we see everyone together all at once. There is no factual evidence of this. We don't even know the exact time that the Magi visited Jesus. But if it would have been at the same time, it would appear that Jesus was already a young child by the time they got to him. There is no factual evidence of this. We don't know the exact time the Magi visited Jesus but it would not have been at the same time. It would appear that Jesus was already a young child by the time they got to him. When the wise men visited Herod in Jerusalem, King Herod was so worried about Jesus being a rival king, he wanted to kill every child to and under to make sure that this prophecy would not come to pass. So Jesus would have been at least two or under not just born. Another reason would be that the Magi left some very valuable gifts worth a great deal of money. Yet when Mary made her birth offering shortly after Jesus' birth, as described by the law, she could only afford two sparrows. Some biblical scholars think that they may have arrived in December, the year after Jesus' birth. This may be one of the reasons why the early church declared December the 25th his birthday. Hmm, maybe. Number four, Christmas is the most important Christian holiday. I mean, advertisers would love you to think that Christmas is the most important day of the Christian calendar. We know Christmas gets all the flashy lights. However, Jesus dying on the cross at Easter and conquering death for our sins is the much more important day of the year. In fact, it's not just one day, but Easter season lasts over two months. In the Bible, Jesus' birthday is part of the story. However, his death and his resurrection is the whole story of the Bible. So I guess Easter is just a little more important. Doesn't sound right if we have Easter lights, Easter carols, Easter gifts, Easter pudding. I want Easter pudding. Number five, Jesus was born in a stable. This story in the Bible always seems like a grumpy innkeeper just doesn't have room but tries to make do by sending them into a cold barn. The one thing that I'm always not sure about in this story is why Joseph, who was from Bethlehem, needed to stay in an inn when he would have known everyone in the town. He was from there. The interesting part is the Greek word kataluma. It is translated as inn. However, it could also mean private room, lodging, or even guest house. Archaeologists have excavated first century homes from the Judean hill country. They discovered that the upper level served as a guest chamber while the lower level served as a living and dining room area, where at times the most vulnerable animals were brought in to protect and look after them, and why there was a manger or a water trough lying around at the time. But due to the census, the owner of the property had a lot of family and friends over and wasn't able to give them anywhere upstairs, but let them have the busy area downstairs. Not perfect, but somewhere safe and warm. Guess that would be like going to Auntie Margaret's place and being told that you have to sleep in the lounge dream. Why do all the other cousins get the spare room? Although we do get the TV. Yeah, there's a plus for everything. 
Number six, Xmas is the sacrilegious abbreviation, or as I like to put it, x nays on the x maze. Years ago, I used to make a big thing about not writing Xmas on Christmas cards as I felt that it was crossing out Christ out of Christmas. A kind of silent protest, if you will, that I guess no one knew about. This sounds weird now. But like a lot of things on this list today, it has no basis with fact. In fact, X is a simple substitute for the Greek word chi, which means, yeah, you guessed it, Christ. So I guess we are crossing out Christ to put Christ. I'm embarrassed. Those six myths are all busted. Merry Christmas, go do something awesome for God, and catch you in the next one.